Um, right now I'm actually just getting ready to fit off this galvanic isolator. So this is actually a Victron unit. Um, there's other ones out there. Uh, this one, I believe, isn't um, ABYC compliant, but uh, I, I believe as long, long as regular testing is done, it should be fine. Um, what is a galvanic isolator? Um, basically, here's a little bit of a connection diagram there. The main purpose of it is it actually provides a isolation between the earth of your shore power and the earth of the boat. So this is obviously mainly pertains to um, mains, uh, mains connections and boats. So um, not 12, 24 volt boats because they're not connected to the shore. And what it does is it actually blocks residual currents flowing through from galvanic uh, reactions. And what's the bad thing about that is it basically hard to see but basically the anodes on the boat it stops them from being eaten away by another boat so if this boat here for example has um, good anodes on it and the boat next door which obviously this one doesn't matter because it's not in the water had bad anodes and it had a galvanic conditioning happening and if they're both plugged into the shore power uh, pendants here when that boat is plugged in and this boat's plugged in, the earths are tied together, that uh, creates a block. If you don't have that block, that boat's galvanic corrosion will be laid onto this boat or neighboring boats, and it'll actually dissolve this, this boat's anodes for that boat. So that means he gets free anodes. Um, so what this does is basically just a, a basic blocking device. It's there to stop that. And how does it work? It's basically two diodes. You can, I guess you can make your own, but it's two diodes which are in opposing fashion. So just showing this in the multimeter in diode setting. If you basically, doing this with one hand, if you basically hook it up from there to there, you'll see it's 0 0.8, 0 0.87, 0 0.868. Now if we do it the reverse, it'll be the same thing. So reversed, yeah. Oops, sorry, it's hard to do. There you go. So what that means is that you have to have a voltage drop greater than that amount for an earth condition to flow, which is typically greater than than the galvanic corrosion uh, voltage potential. So these are a very important device. Most boats are fitted them. This boat here, it's actually undergoing repair work, as you can tell. And that's still in the midst of it all. It works. Um, this boat was built in an older, uh, earlier time in Australia before it was a bit more widely known or to install them as a standard uh, piece of equipment on a, on a boat. So this, is, this boat was built in the 90s. So if your boat's quite old, um, check it same as if the boat um, if you haven't checked one of these you should always regularly check these so typically I tell people that you should be checking this every 12 months and all it is is just a simple diet check um, and just to be safe there's no, there's no galvanic corrosion happening you should basically break the circuit so there should be no connection so minimum of unplugged on the shore power as a minimum all the power turned off so there's no way that current can flow and then you can test it either way because this this is only looking a diode test is only looking for voltage drop, so it won't actually die. so you can actually uh, falsify it if there's a live circuit there with a little bit of uh, voltage flowing through it. So as long as the circuit as long as it's not in circuit, you can test it, and it should test both ways, and they should be both the same reading both ways. If it's not the same reading, it's either throw away or it needs a rebuild. This unit here, in particular, is not designed to be rebuilt. They're pretty cheap. Uh, I think they're about under eighty dollars Australian. So very, very cheap insurance for getting basically motor damage due to anodes getting eaten out on your after coolers, um, heat exchangers, um, shafts, props, anything like that. Like these motors here, they're worth $60,000 each, you know? So $80 as opposed to $60,000, I know where I'd rather spend the money. So 
hopefully that was a bit of help for someone. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post up in the comments. Thanks.